All right, guys, so in this video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the updated polls, some different scenarios, and also uh, Trump's opinion when it comes to abortion. What he's saying is telling me he is playing to win, and he is utilizing the correct strategy when it comes to trying to win over independence. But taking a look at the recent polls, you can see we got a big one that came out a few days ago out of Minnesota, and I'm going to discuss the idea of Trump expanding the map, giving him even more potential options when it comes to any type of combination to get him to 270 as opposed to Biden, who really is just forced to play defense maybe outside of North Carolina. And speaking of North Carolina, you can see Quinnipiac, very liberal pollster, very liberal pollster. Maybe they've changed their polling techniques, but... In terms of them, I don't really, you know, trust them very much. And even they have Trump up too. You include everyone else, Trump goes up by three in North Carolina. Every poll out of North Carolina suggests that Trump, he won it in 2016, 2020. It was really close. In 2024, it should be a more comfortable victory for him, maybe around four or five points right now. The big Minnesota poll, this is the first Minnesota poll of the year, at least according to Real Clear Politics. Trump only down two in a head to head only poll. So you would have to think if you include RFK Jr., not that RFK Jr. for sure helps Trump, because we have seen polls where he doesn't really change things. But you would think RFK Jr. would not hurt Trump. So if we're seeing a poll out of Minnesota that has Trump only down two, and you include Stein, West, RFK Jr., maybe it's tied. Maybe Trump is up one. Obviously, these are polls. They're not exact things, and we've got months before the election. But seeing a Minnesota poll is very interesting. I'm not ready to call Minnesota a swing state yet because of what happened in 2020 with Biden winning it fairly easily in 2016. It was really close with Trump and Hillary. Trump campaigning on the final days in Minnesota. This is a state that he believes he can win and it would absolutely expand his math. This is good news for him only being down two in that poll, a general election poll with Biden up four. You know, you look at something like that head to head 41-37. You know, you're not really pushing people to make a decision. There's a lot of undecideds there. I don't really think that's accurate polling data, and then a general election, including all of them, just a popular vote, Trump up one. Taking a look at Minnesota, you can see just the lack of overall polls. One poll this year, the other two polls were from October and November of last year with Biden plus three and plus two. So this is pretty consistent polling with Biden enjoying only a two to three point lead without including any of the other candidates. And again, we're going to have to see how Minnesota develops once we get more polls. For all we know, there could be a few more polls that come out that have Biden up by five or six. And then maybe we're thinking, well, maybe it's not really a swing state. We have to be cautious about this. But this is good news for Trump only being down two there. The Thursday update, Florida, Trump up significantly. They're not even doing polls in Florida anymore. It is not a swing state. If the Democrats invest money into Florida trying to flip that state, what a complete waste. You're better off lighting money on fire. It's not going to happen. Trump up 13. You include all of them. He goes up 14. North Carolina from high point, Trump up three. And then you do also have California, (laughs) Biden up 23 there. I don't think Biden's going to be losing California. A few polls to update here today. Texas, this is another, you know, state that Trump for sure is going to win. Trump up by nine. That is a Republican pollster. It's interesting to see Ted Cruz up by nine. That's good news for him. But again, this is a Republican pollster. And you can see there's an example where when you bring in the other three, it doesn't really help Trump at all. He just stays plus nine. Uh, So the thing that we're seeing when you bring in Kennedy, Stein, and West, it either helps Trump or it doesn't do anything. It's very rare it actually hurts Trump. So... You know, when it comes to Kennedy Jr., worst case, he's kind of a net neutral for Trump. And then just taking a look at the electoral uh, map right now, you can see if you give Trump, Nevada, and Arizona, two states that I think they're not heavily trending towards Trump, but right now it's it's very positive when you look at basically every poll confirming and admitting it's, it's about Trump plus four or five in those states. You give Trump Georgia, which is just so huge. And this is where we're at. And this is why there are people arguing to turn Nebraska into winner-take-all. If it turns into winner-take-all, you do not have to win any of the Rust Belt states that are swing states. 
you know, you would be at 269 and you would tie it right there if Nebraska was winner take all. Now, Democrats could argue, let's make Maine winner take all. And if Biden can win Maine, then you're basically in the same situation that you would have been because Biden would get another electoral vote. Trump would get another electoral vote. I think both of them should be winner take all, but it's good for Trump if they become winner take all because Trump has a higher chance of winning Maine outright than Biden does with Nebraska. Biden's going to lose Nebraska by 20 points. Trump might lose Maine, at least right now, projected maybe by four or five points. He could swing that very low population. It doesn't take much to turn a state like that if they both become winner take all, which they both should. It's going to be so much easier to do predictions than dealing with these districts, but that is just an update on that. And then this is how the math kind of expands for Trump. You bring a state like Minnesota into the fold. Let's just say for the sake of argument, he wins Minnesota by less than a point or whatever. He barely wins it. You're there already. You don't need to win a single state. You can lose Pennsylvania. You can lose Michigan. You can lose Wisconsin. You could even lose a state like Nevada in this scenario and still win the election overall. When you expand the map, it just makes things so much easier. A lot of the pain is alleviated when it comes to trying to find your path. And then you can see this is a situation. This is why Georgia is so important. So you give Biden Georgia. He keeps Minnesota, which we would expect him to keep Minnesota. And you, you have Trump with Nevada and Arizona. It's why Georgia is so important. See, uh, for Trump, you know, the math is a little bit tougher. You would have to win both Wisconsin and Michigan or just Pennsylvania. I think right now, in terms of chances, Michigan and Wisconsin, higher chance going Trump's way than Pennsylvania, but it's close. But it's just why Georgia is so important. Trump needs to take back Georgia in 2024. It's going to make it a lot easier in terms of his math and not relying on those Rust Belt states, which we know are going to be decided by a point, maybe two points. Maybe Trump can win a state like Wisconsin by around two and a half points. I think that's realistic, but states like Michigan, even with the recent polling that has Trump up by like two and a half to three, I just don't trust Michigan to be a, a relatively comfortable Trump victory. I, you know, they're just so close. So relying on those states is extremely hard. And the idea when you have more cracks at it, like you bring Minnesota in, you know, to the fold and possibly make it a swing state. I will say this, does, it does kind of remind me of Hillary in 2016. I mean, they thought she had a billion paths because they thought... Florida was a swing state, and it was, but like Iowa was a swing state. They were talking about Texas being a swing state, and now it's like we're doing the same thing with Trump in 2024. I guess the difference is, you know, it, it, Biden is an incumbent, but he has a horrible approval rating. He's got the worst approval rating on record since we started tracking it, so maybe that's what can help Trump a little bit more, and then you can see this is a scenario where, well, Virginia, that's the other state everyone talks about. It's Minnesota, Virginia. That would be Trump's expanded math. You could also maybe throw New Mexico in there. It would be very shocking, though. It's really just uh, Minnesota and Virginia. Virginia right now, I would say, you know, the few polls that I've seen, it was like Biden plus six or seven. I will say there were a few polls that were done back early in the year when Nikki Haley was still in the race, the Republican race, and, and she was up by three over Biden. So it's not like Virginia is this crazy Democratic stronghold. I don't know if they would vote for Trump over Biden. Uh, we just have to see polls. If, if new polls come out and say Biden's up by seven or eight, I won't say it's a swing state, but it's an interesting state to take into account. And then you can see the math here. Let's say he wins Virginia and Minnesota slightly. You can lose Nevada. You can lose Arizona. As long as you keep Georgia, you don't even need Wisconsin, Michigan, or Pennsylvania. This is why expanding the map is so valuable. And, and, and it's something that if Trump is able to do, whether it's taking Minnesota or Virginia or even forcing Biden to play defense in those states, it is going to help him significantly force Biden to invest resources. For, I really shouldn't say force Biden because Biden's not doing a single thing. Biden doesn't even know how to spell the word president at this point. It's really the Democratic Party. That's really what I should refer to that administration as the force the Democrats to invest resources into defending Minnesota and Virginia of all places. If polls come out and suggest that it's really close, Biden's, or excuse me, the Democrats' really only offensive strategy would be trying to steal a state like North Carolina because it was close in both 2020 and 2016. But the polls suggest, based on where we are in 2024, it's just, it's not going to happen for them in terms of North Carolina, they have to play full-blown defense. My God, do they have to play defense in Georgia, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, 
all of those states right now seem like they're teetering, especially Georgia, I would expect to flip. Like right now, I would expect Arizona to be a Trump state, Nevada to be a Trump state, Georgia to be a Trump state. That's not guaranteeing Trump an election win, but that's opening up more paths. Right now, I can't really say on Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania just because those states are always so close. Obviously, Florida and Ohio are Trump states. North Carolina right now, I would say, is a Trump state. Michigan and Virginia, I would still say, are Biden states. I need to see more polling on both of those. And then Maine, I would still say, you know, the statewide Maine probably going to Biden. We'll see what they do. I would love to see every single state be winner take all. It would just be easier to do. And then also I wanted to discuss Trump coming out and saying it's a state's issue. That's exactly how you have to handle abortion. Look, we all have our opinions on abortion, but the abortion issue is a nuclear bomb for the Republicans and not in a good way. Okay, not in a good way. That has been proven. It was proven in 2022. And you say, well, you know, the Democrats performed very well. You know, in the midterms, they outperformed the polls. Yeah, because of Roe v. Wade. They got a gift and they fear-mongered about it. It's the exact same thing with January 6th. It's like Roe v. Wade, they think it's the worst thing in the world. It helped them. That was why they performed so well in the midterms. January 6th, they used January 6th as political leverage against Trump and against the Republicans. So, of course, January 6th helped them again. And it's like they complain about things that help them. It is all about gaining political leverage. And when it comes to a topic like abortion, Trump took the most moderate conservative approach you could possibly take. That's why what came out of Arizona, it's just so dis disturbing. Even Carrie Lake comes out and says, no, we don't want the ban. It's not good. If you're going to do a ban, do it in 2025. You're just shooting yourself. You're shooting your own party in the foot with something like this. But we've even seen MSNBC come out with articles because they're so desperate to bring this abortion issue into the fold in 2024. They've come out with articles and said, oh, Trump's had 50 different opinions on abortion. He's been terrible because they can't fear monger because Trump is taking such a moderate approach on this issue. And it's what he should do. This is the ultimate strategy for a Republican trying to win over independence in the year 2024. This is how you have to approach it. It's a state's issue. You really can't come at me. Democrats would love to make abortion the number one issue. It's not going to happen. The economy is going to be higher up. In immigration is going to be higher up for sure. And abortion is going to be down the list probably fourth or fifth, maybe even lower than that. So when it comes to an issue like this, Trump is basically making it a non-issue. He's saying it's a state thing. I'm not getting getting involved. That's exactly what he should do, especially when you're talking about a, an election coming up in a matter of months. Don't shoot yourself in the foot by getting overzealous and saying something stupid that's going to hurt your own chances when we saw the 2022 midterm situation with Roe v. Wade being overturned in June of 2022. Guess what happened a few months later? It was the midterms. Guess who overperformed? The Democrats. And it certainly wasn't because of Biden, because we know historically Biden's approval rating was so bad normally you know, the, the party that has control with that bad of an approval rating performs really bad in the midterms and it didn't happen because of Roe v. Wade. So Trump is saying, I'm not talking about it. It's a non-issue. Let's focus on immigration. Let's focus on the economy. It is smart political strategy, but either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.